Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this raffia purse. I purchased this raffia ribbon um, paper from Amazon. I'll have it linked in the description box. And the hook that I'm using is a six millimeter streamline metal hook. These are new hooks from Furls Crochet. And I'm really impressed with this hook for this project. I'm not, I'm just going to let you know that working with the raffia it can be a little hard on your hands. It is tough to work with, but this is a nice, good, strong, solid hook. And I found working with it has really helped um, make this project go along nicely. Now the Odyssey hook would also probably work well for this project, but I definitely love this metal hook. It's, it's really worked up well with it. So I've already started working on the purse and I have my first circular piece made and this is the section that you'll create to join the purse together so what we need to do is make another circular piece and then we're going to attach it so i'm going to go through all these steps with you but i just wanted to show you here what i've already started i'm going to fasten this off And we'll get started with our circular piece. So we're going to begin with a magic circle, magic ring. So take your raffia, wrap it around your index finger three times. We're going to take the hook, pushing it through. Okay, take your first, pull it, and we're going to chain two. So this is now our ring that we're going to be working into. We're gonna work double crochet stitches and I'm gonna work a total of 12. Okay, so I'm gonna work those off camera and then I'll meet you up. So once you have worked up your 12 stitches, we need to now tighten up this ring, okay? So make sure you can see your ribbon. I'm going to start pulling this. Only one piece is going to start to tug in. So you want to take that one, you want to give it a tug, it's going to pull. And this is tough to work with, but just do your best. Okay, so now what we're going to do is join. We're going to join though, find the top of the stitches, which are here. I'm going to do a reverse slip stitch join. So I'm going to go back to front and I'm going to pull that through. And then I'm going to chain two. Okay, and that's just doing the reverse. It's going to make that join a little less noticeable. So what we're gonna do now is work two double crochets into every stitch around. So we're increasing up to 24 stitches, not including the chain two as a stitch here at this point. So you're gonna work two in every stitch around. Okay, so I've worked around and I've double checked my count. I have 24 stitches. I'm gonna reverse slip stitch to join. So make sure to keep this yarn to the front. You're gonna stick your hook through the stitch back to front. We're just gonna grab the yarn, pulling it through. And I'm gonna chain two. Now for the next round, we're gonna do another increase, increasing up to 36 stitches. We'll do that by working one double crochet in the first stitch and then two in the next. Okay, so this now is our repeat. And you do have to really give a tug at working with this ribbon. So one in the next and then two in the next. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat that around off camera and then I'll meet you up again. I'm just going to get this tail out of the way. So you just wanna kind of weave it back into the opposite direction. We've already crocheted over it when we worked those stitches. Just want to get that secure and I'm just going to trim that just to get that out of the way. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and I'm going to do my reverse slip stitch join. Make sure you're going through the top of the stitch, not the chain. We're going back to front. Okay, keep your working yarn to the front and then just grab it, pulling it through. Okay, so now this round's gonna be a little bit different. This time I'm gonna include my chain as a stitch. I'm gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. And in the next stitch, I'm gonna work a double crochet. So the chain four is gonna count as a double crochet and a chain one space. So now I'll work a chain one, and in the next double crochet, I'll work a double crochet. And chain one and a double crochet. So every stitch we're gonna have a double crochet chain one. We're just repeating this pattern all the way, whoops, all the way around. You have to really tug. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then you I want what I'd like you to do is end with a chain because we do need to work into this space here. So now we'll slip stitch in the third chain of the chain four. Okay, so now that's nice. And it should be flattening out nicely at this point. I'll measure it for you just so you have an idea as to where I'm at. Okay, it's about a seven and a quarter inches at this point. Now we'll chain two and I'm going to work two double crochets in each chain, chain one space around. Okay and then I'm just going to skip over and work two double crochets in the next space. Okay, so you should have 36 chain one spaces. So we need a, we'll be doubling, we'll be doubling up. So you should have 72 stitches when you complete this round. Okay, so count and make sure that you do have 72 stitches. Now we're gonna slip stitch into the first double crochet. I'm gonna do the reverse. and I'll chain two. Okay, so now we're gonna do another increase. So we'll work a double crochet in the first stitch. That chain two won't count as a stitch. One, two, three stitches before the increase. So three, and then we'll do an increase in the fourth stitch. Okay, so work three doubles, 
one. three and then two in the next okay so now repeat that all the way around Okay, so I've worked all the way around. I've already slip stitched. I did the reverse join and I have a total of 90 stitches now. This final round, we're just going to work single crochets. So we're gonna chain one and work a single crochet into every stitch around. And that is gonna complete our circle, so our front or back. The purse will be reversible so you can use whichever side you want for the front or back. We're just working single crochets around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. And then I'll meet you up. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. I'm just gonna do a regular slip stitch join in my first single crochet. So at this point, it's measuring about 11 and a half, right about 11 and a half inches. Okay, so now if you're working on your second piece, this is enough, but for the first one, I'm gonna show you how to make it like this. So what you're gonna do after crocheting your round, we're gonna add this to it. So it's like a join as you go piece. Really, really simple to do. You don't fasten off or anything. We can just continue making this as we go. So I don't really need it for this one, but I'm just gonna show it to you since I've already done some pre-work to get this purse going. So what we're gonna do is chain out nine. Okay, so I've chained out nine. Now in the second chain from the hook, we're gonna work single crochets across. One, two, three, this can be tough. So you might want to take breaks with this project and split it up, not make it all at once. One, two, three, four, five. seven, eight. Okay, so we skip over the first stitch and then we slip stitch into the next two and this is what joins it. Okay, and then you turn and then we just work single crochets back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're working eight stitches. Okay, and then we chain one and turn. Work back down eight stitches. So we'll continue to work down eight stitches, slip stitch in the next two, and just keep working back and forth. So that's what you're gonna do all the way 
working that all the way around. But what we're doing is we're not going to fully close it in because we're gonna leave a section open. So I'm gonna count across how many stitches I've left. And then you can always just put a stitch marker so you know how far you need to work. So I've left a total of 26 stitches. So what you would do is count across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, and then you can just mark off can mark that off so then you know you know that you need to keep working in rows all the way around up until your marker okay so you can just go ahead and do that I'm gonna pull this back because I'm gonna show you the next step to put the bag together okay so what I did is I counted over 26 marking the 26 stitch with my marker okay so I want to match this up so here is right sides together here. This is gonna be the top of the purse. So let's now put our right sides. I want to start slip stitching to this side. So we're gonna go through each stitch and then we're going across and just slip stitching. Okay. Now you could fasten this off and sew it as well, but this seems easy just to kind of slip stitch it together. Now the right side okay, is going to look nice. It's going to look like that. So the ridging will end up being to the inside of the purse. It'll sew, a, it'll sew a little bit flatter if you sew it instead, but I think for ease, I'm gonna just slip stitch it and I think it's gonna look fine. Okay, so you just need to do that all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna complete that off camera. Get over here, we're gonna meet up again. Okay, so once you've worked all the way around, you can see how this is looking at this point and now I'm going to fasten this off okay and then we can put the bag Flip it so our right sides are out. Now you can see that the side that we slip stitch, it's gonna indent in. You could give this a little bit of a steam. And if you decide that you don't like that, pull it back, you'll have enough yarn from slip stitching to sew it. So I'm just gonna play around with my fingers to get this a bit more flattened. But if you prefer the look of this side, you could just whip stitch your pieces together and it will come out a bit flatter, but I don't really mind. I think with a little bit of a steam, I can flatten this right out. You could even leave something sitting on it just to get it flattened a bit better. Okay, so this is how your bag's looking. Now we have a couple, we're gonna need to get rid of all of our tails and stuff, but I'm just gonna leave those for now. The next option will be what type of straps we wanna add.
Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make this nice, sturdy Romanian cord for the straps. Now, you can decide if you would prefer just the one strap and you could attach them to each side of the purse, or we can make two attaching them here on each side of the bag. So I've already made one cord and it's about 32 inches in length and it's super easy to make. As you can see, it's nice and sturdy and strong. So I still have enough of my ribbon left to do two. If you're running short, you know, I would just go with one just so that you can stick within the one ball of raffia. So we'll start with a slip knot. So you'll put a slip knot on the hook and chain two. Then you'll work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Now what you want to do is turn your work and you'll see this loop right here. We're going to go under it. Sometimes it's good to give it a little tug on this before we go through. Pull up a loop. Okay, make sure those loops are nice and loose and complete your single crochet. We'll turn again. Now you'll see every time we turn, there'll be the two loops. So we'll go under now those two loops, yarn over, pulling through a loop. And these two loops on the hook is what we're gonna be going under here. So the looser we have those, the easier it will be to work through them the next time. See? so. It's nice and easy to go under them. So just make sure you're giving those a nice tug, pull through, turn. Now it's a little more challenging with this raffia, but just do your best or use yarn and do yarn handles. But this makes them nice and strong. You just keep everything loose, it will make it easier. And you're just gonna continue in this manner, really making your strap as long as you want. I've made my two straps 32 inches. So go ahead and I'm going to complete mine off camera and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so I ended up with just enough yarn. I'm just going to fasten this one off to make my straps really only about 30 inches. So let me just give them a measure. I didn't want it to, to go into another ball, so I just made them work with 30 inches. Again, if you run out, just go with one strap instead of two. Okay, so I'm gonna attach the straps to the sides. Again, if you decide to go with only one, I would attach them to the corners. And we're just gonna use the tails and a yarn needle. And I kind of just like to eyeball it about halfway. And then all I'm going to do is bring my needle up through the back. And back through and we're just going to weave it 
back and forth like this. You just want to attach it up a section of the way here, about this far. And just find a spot to push that through. Okay, so you're just going to continue up that way and then once you're done you just weave your tail down through and then back in the opposite direction. And then we'll come over and we'll do the same thing for this side. So it's going to end up already done this side looking like this so I've attached them. So when you're weaving, you just want to go through, just find loops to pull it through like this. want to take your time and then you can weave it back up in the opposite direction okay so at this point just make sure you weave in all of those tails that you have and it's basically finished at this point. If you're able to line your bag, you could totally do that for an extra added touch, but it's not necessary. And I'm just gonna add one of my personalized tags to the side. And I'll have the links for all of these in the description box. And I have a kit for these that you can then hammer. So you just want to line up your size. Okay, and then actually I'm missing my piece right now that goes on here. Then you have another piece that comes with the kit that you can then hammer that in place. But it will also just snap, so you just want to hammer it to make sure that it's secure. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day.